Okay, so in this video, we are going to consider how we can reverse a singly linked list, how we can reverse the nodes in this list, and we're going to look at how we can perform this task in an iterative way and also in a recursive way. So just to, I guess, be a little bit more explicit about what I mean when I say reverse the list, if we're given this list here, A, B, C, D, this is our linked list, our singly linked list, then what the result of a reversal should be, should be a list down here. So this is D, C, B, A. So specifically, the nodes in this list have been flipped. So front to back and back to front. So that's what we want to do. That's what we're going to do both iteratively and recursively. So let me minimize this and we'll go to uh, actually writing the code. So I think understanding this will be a little bit easier if we just write out let's say a comment that corresponds to the figure that we saw on the slide. So our list that we start with is something that looks like this, where we have A points to B, B points to C, C points to D, and then uh, D points to null. So I'll just use zero to denote null. And basically what we want to end up with is something that looks like uh, D points to C, points to B, points to A, points to null, something like this. So this is kind of what we want to end up with at the end of the day. Now. One way we can also look at this uh, reversal is by rewriting it in the following way, where really we just observe that the key ingredient here, the key thing that's uh, operation that's being done, is if we look at the initial list and we look at the reversal list, really what's going on here is we're reversing the orientation of these arrows. That is, we're changing the uh, pointer from, let's say, this node to this node. Instead of pointing from A to B, it points from B to A. Let me rewrite this list here in a way that we just reorient the arrows. Really what we're doing is we're just flipping things around. So let's just rewrite that out. Uh, let's see, so that is that. So right, so what are we doing? So A, B, C, D, that's the original list. And then if we look at the reversal, D, C, B, A, that's what we're after. And again, if we, if we just read this list back here, this is the head node, and it's going from here to the last element in the list, D, C, B, A. Really what we're doing is we're taking this list here, and we're re-flipping, or not re-flipping, we're flipping around the orientation of those arrows. We're changing where those pointers are pointing to. So that's really kind of the, um, I guess it's, a, it's one key observation to solving this problem, and we're going to use that to actually code this up. So how are we actually going to do this? Well, one thing we can do is if we're going to flip the orientation of the arrows, we need to keep track of some, some pieces of information. Namely, if we're, let's say here, we're on this node B, we want to know where does the arrow here go? So we want to keep track of, let's say, the current node that we happen to be on in this case, which is B. And we want to know, okay, what is B's previous node? Well, the previous node to B is currently A. But what we want to do is we want to change that so that way the arrow flips, so that way the next node of B is A, and the previous one of A is B. So namely, we want to get this type of thing going on over here. So one of the things that we're going to do as we move along is we're going to iterate through this list, and we're going to keep track of both the previous and current node, and we're going to use that information to reorient these arrows in the list. So if you've seen the video on how to swap nodes in a singly linked list, this uh, keeping track of previous and current nodes should be familiar to you. So, so let's go ahead and code up a function for this. Let's call it reverse iterative. It's a class method, so it'll take self. And let's just first go through the list while keeping track of both the previous and current node. So this should look familiar to you if you've seen the video on how to swap nodes, how we can go through the list and keep track of both the previous and current one all the while. So this will get us a little bit there, uh, but it won't quite solve the problem. We'll tweak it from there and see if we can solve it from there. So we'll set a variable equal to none. This will keep track of the previous node. And then we'll set the current node equal to initially the head of the list. And this will move along as we go through the list, updating all the while. So what we'll do is we'll say while current is not none, that is while the current node is not equal to the null character or it's not the end of the list, we'll update the previous um, node equal to the current node. And then we'll say the current node should be updated to the next one that it's going to. So we're just going through the list and we're keeping track of both the previous and current nodes all the while. So let's go back up to this thing over here and let's actually ask ourselves, what are we trying to do? 
So let's look at this. Let's just assume that we're going through the list and let's say the current node that we happen to be on is this B node. So what do we want? What is the end result of what we want to do if this is our current node? So the current node we're on is that previous node has A, that's the, that's the previous node for B, and the next node for it is C. So what we really want to do is we want to say, okay, the next pointer is pointing to C, but we really want the next pointer to be pointing to A. We want to move that arrow from B to C, and we want to say, okay, it should go from B to A instead. We want to change the next, the dot next property of the node that holds B, and we want to say, don't go to C, but go to A instead. We can do that by saying the following thing. We can say current.next, again, assuming that the current node that we're on is, let's say, B, we'll set that equal to the previous node because we don't want it to go to C, we want it to go to A, that's the previous one. So that will flip the arrow. That'll give us something that looks kind of like this here. So B is pointing to A. So one thing that this is gonna mess up though, as we're moving along, we set the current.next equal to the previous one, we update previous, and then we say, okay, now the current node, the next one, is equal to current.next. Well, we updated the value of current.next equal to the previous one, and so it's going to, it's not going to go to the next node that we want it to go to, which is C, it's going to go to the wrong node. So we want to basically store in a temporary variable, we want to store a pointer to the next node of B before we go ahead and change it. So essentially, what we want to do, let's go ahead and create a variable called next, and this will be equal to current.next. So this is a temporary variable, it's, it's, a, it's a pointer that's pointing to what B is currently pointing to, which is C. Okay, so we store that, and then we say, okay, let's update the arrow from B pointed to A, that's current.next is equal to the previous, and then we move along. So the previous one is equal to the current, that's okay. Now current is not equal to current.next, but we want current to be equal to the thing that we stored up above, which is just the next variable. So this will move along and this should flip the arrows in the proper directions. The final thing that we need to make sure that we account for is once we've reached the end of this is we need to set the head of the list equal to the uh, last node. So initially, head of the node was A. We're moving right along, we're flipping the arrows and now we're here. And that is now the head of the list because we have something that looks like this or this, the, either of these two things. The head of the list is now D, that's the starting node. So what we want to do after we exit the loop, after we exit this while loop, we want to update the head equal to the previous node. So that will reset the head uh, to the proper node. So this might look a little confusing. confusing. The problem itself um, is not straightforward or easy. I don't think, I, I don't think it's at least that way initially. It takes a little bit of really kind of thinking about how to orient things and, and, and there's a few tricks maybe. Um, one thing that I think does make this a little bit easier to step through and understand is to print out how these things um, update as you're stepping along. So I have this custom print helper function that I wrote that takes in the, uh, like let's say a node and also a name that you can give it. And it prints out none if the node is none and it prints out the uh, data stored to that node if the node is not none. It's all it's doing. So I think it's helpful to put in, probably write, uh, you can put them anywhere you want of course, but I think it's helpful to put those print statements here. So for instance, if we call them, let's say print helper, we'll send it, we'll set this uh, node that we're gonna send it the previous node and then we'll give it kind of an identifier of the string previous. We'll do the same thing for both the current node, so just like that, and then we'll do the same thing for the next thing that we're storing as well. So we'll say self.printhelper, uh, next, and then nxt. So if we go ahead and run this, we see some output. Actually, before I print out these custom print statements, let me just comment these out. Uh, I also, I don't think I showed this in the video, but I did call this function down below. So I created a linked list that has A, B, C, and D, just like the one that we've been toying with so far. And then I went ahead and called the reverse iterative function that we have uh, just written here. So first, before I have those custom print statements, I'm just going to write this run it, verify that the list is indeed reversed. So DCBA, that looks correct. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and comment these out. And I'm going to add a new line here just so it's a little bit easier to read some of these things. So let's go ahead and look at this again. So basically this is the state of the previous current and next 
uh, the pointer to next at the first iteration of the loop. So previous is none, the current node is A, the next one is B. And it's a little bit maybe easier to kind of see if, if the logic that was used to uh, step through this is a bit opaque. Um, the print statements might help to see exactly what is happening in each iteration of that loop. So uh, hopefully that will solidify kind of how this is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. So that's the recursive way, uh, sorry, that's the iterative way of solving this problem. What we need to do now, though, is we need to figure out how to solve this problem recursively. So we need to recursively reverse the order of the nodes in the list. Okay, so let's go ahead and code up the recursive implementation of this. We'll call this reverse recursive. It'll take self. And then inside of this function, just to make it a little bit cleaner, I'm going to define a function inside of here, which is kind of a recursive helper function. Let's call it reverse recursive, um, just with an underscore before it, and then this will take current and previous. So these are the nodes that will pass into the recursive calls that will be updated on each recursive call of the function until we eventually arrive at our base case. So let's actually think about what this recursive function is going to do. So if we go up to the iterative version, uh, one of the things that obviously is not going to fly in the recursive implementation is this loop here. There's no looping constructs in a recursive function. But we can ask, what is this while loop doing? Well, the while loop is checking as long as the current node is not none, keep going through the, loop, the list. So we're going to ask a similar question in the recursive call. We're going to check if the current node that we pass into this function here, if that is not uh, present, basically if this is none, then what we're going to do is we're going to return the previous node. And that will help us do something similar to this where we can set the head of the list equal to the previous thing at the end of the uh, iteration in this case. So let me actually write this out because I think it's a little bit more clear. So the base case is if not current, so if we've reached the end of the list, return the previous thing. And then what we can do is we can call this function here we can call this function inside of the reverse recursive non underscore function and we can say self dot head is equal to reverse recursive and we can set cur the current head equal to sorry we can set the current node equal to the head and the previous node initially equal to none. So this is very similar to what we did up here, where we set the previous node initially equal to none and the current equal to the head of the list. And then every time we call this function, which we'll, we will fill out, we're going to update the state of current and previous as we go along in the loop, uh, sorry, in the recursive calls to this function. So we've got the base case covered and really the meat of the recursive call is going to be pretty much identical to what we have here. So let's just copy that, move it on down here. So if the base case is met, the return is the previous node. Otherwise, let's get rid of these print statements. Otherwise, we do the same operation as we did before. We create a temporary variable, a pointer to current.next. We update current.next with previous, so we don't mess up the state of that. Update previous, update current to the pointer next instead of current.next, so we don't mess anything up there. And then that's pretty much it. What we'll do after this, after this line here is we'll actually call the function again. So we'll say reverse recursive current previous, and that will be the updated versions of those things. So to call that function, go back up, check if it's not current. So basically if it's none, uh, if it's not, if it is still present, if we're still going through the loop, then we'll do this magic here that we found uh, worked for the iterative case, recursive call. At the very end, once we've finished, we'll update the head pointer to point to the last the previous node. So instead of pointing to the first node that it initially pointed to, the head, it points to the new head, the updated head of the list. So again, let's check and see if this actually works. So let's say list dot reverse, uh, not iterative, but recursive. And let's see what we get. And we'll print out the list after that. So it looks like I forgot to put in a return statement here. That is my problem. So I'm going to add that return statement because, of course, we need to actually call the function. Otherwise, that's nothing's going to happen. So I'll write that again, give it a run, and there we go. So we have DCBA, and that is the reverse of the list that was performed recursively. So that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was clear. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions, comments, or anything of the sort. I'm happy to help. Um, 
Thanks again for watching as always, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.